Hi there. Here's a challenge exercise from the textbook Algebra 2 by Larson. Let A over B and C over D be distinct rational numbers. Remember that being rational numbers means that A, B, C, and D are all integers. So A over B and C over D are ratios of integers and B and D are non-zero because we can't have zeros chilling in the denominator. We're asked to find the rational number that lies exactly halfway between these two rational numbers. I think what makes this problem a bit of a challenge is not that it's exceptionally difficult, but it takes a little bit of thought to solve and it can be a little intimidating because we'll be dealing with some slightly messy fractions as well as having four letters here, which might feel a little uncomfortable, but don't let that intimidate you. For many problems, this one included, a picture can be pretty helpful. Let's start there with a picture. The picture that will apply to this situation best would be a number line. Since A over B and C over D are distinct rational numbers, one has to be bigger than the other. Let's just assume that C over D is the bigger one. It doesn't really matter which is bigger, but that will help us make a picture. So assume that A over B is the smaller one, so it's going to be over here on the left. C over D is bigger, so it's somewhere over here on the right. We're looking for the rational number that's exactly halfway between those two. You may have heard the phrase before, split the difference, like if you're negotiating price and you're saying 10 and someone else is saying no, 20, you might just say, well, let's split the difference which refers to the average, the number that's halfway between. Here's the difference, just split it like that. Splitting the difference between 10 and 20 would be 15. If you happen to know that the average of two numbers is the number that's halfway between them, then you could solve this problem pretty easily. You would just say, I've got to find the average of these two numbers. I can find the average of A over B and C over D by adding the two numbers and then dividing by two. Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is equal to A over B plus C over D times the reciprocal of two, that's times one half. Then you could just distribute the one half through the sum and get some common denominators and simplify your expression and you would be done. But you might not know that the average of two numbers happens to be the number that's exactly halfway between them. So instead of finishing this, Let's start the problem thinking a little bit more slowly and we'll come to the same exact answer. We know that we're looking for this number here that's exactly halfway between these two. One of the most useful things you can do when you're trying to solve a problem is to give stuff names. So let's name this number that we're looking for. Let's call it X. Since X is exactly halfway between these two numbers, well, I know that this distance from A over B to X and this distance from X to C over D, those have to be the same because X is exactly halfway between them. So what is this distance from A over B to X? Well, that is X minus A over B, just like the distance from two to five is five minus two or three. I know that this distance, x minus a over b, is the same as this distance, which is c over d minus x. So now I have this equation, x minus a over b equals c over d minus x. All that remains is to solve this equation for x, which is the number I'm interested in. So if you want, you can pause the video, pick things up from here, and let me know what you get down in the comments. Hopefully you've given it a try. Now let's finish this together. In order to solve for x, I need to get x by itself. So I've got to collect all my x's on one side of the equation. Let's bring them all to the left. 
Over here on the right, I have a minus x, so to get rid of that, I'm gonna add x to both sides. Then on the left, since I add x, instead of just one x, I'll have two x's. So on the left, I have two x minus a over b, and on the right, I just have c over d. I had a minus x, but since I added x, that minus x isn't there anymore. All right, now I wanna collect all my constant terms on the right side of the equation. I've got this minus a over b on the left, so to get rid of it, I'm gonna add a over b to both sides. Then on the left, all I'll have is two x. On the right, I'll have c over d plus a over b. The order of addition doesn't matter, so I'm gonna write a over b first. So on the right, I have a over b, plus c over d. Now, I've got this factor of two being multiplied by x that I might wanna get rid of. If I divide both sides of the equation by two, I'll be right back where I was before, this times a half. And we could do that, but before dividing by two, I'm going to combine these fractions first. To combine a over b and c over d, we're gonna have to give them common denominators. But how do we do that? Well, let's start working through it. I'm gonna write an expression that this is equal to trying to make some progress towards combining the fractions. I would like a over b to have a d in its denominator, just like c over d does. In order to do that, I'm gonna multiply a over b by d over d. This way, I'll have a d in the denominator, but also I'm not changing the value because d over d is one, so I'm just multiplying by one. Similarly, for c over d, I would like it to have a b in its denominator, so I'm gonna multiply it by b over b. Again, that's a multiplication by one, so it doesn't change it, it just changes the expression of the denominator. Now we've just got some fraction multiplication to do, which is like the easiest thing to do with fractions. On the left, I've got a over b times d over d. So that's a d over b d. That's being added to c times b over d times b. So let's write that, c b over d b. Order of multiplication doesn't matter, so instead of d b, I'm gonna write b d, just so it matches the other denominator. So now I, now I have that two x is equal to this. Let's write that. Two x equals a d over b d, plus cb over bd. Since these two fractions now have the same denominator, I can combine them into one. So 2x is equal to ad plus cb all over that common denominator bd. Now, to finish solving for x, the number that's exactly halfway between the two original rational numbers, I've just gotta divide both sides by two to get rid of this factor of two. So on the left, I'll have just x. On the right, I'm dividing this by two. Remember, dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half, and if I multiply this by one half, I'll just have a factor of two down in the denominator. So x is equal to ad plus cb over two b, d, and that is my final answer. If I've got two distinct rational numbers, a over b and c over d, the number that's exactly halfway between them is a, d plus c, b divided by two, b, d. Let's see a quick example. Say I've got the two rational numbers one half and six fifths. I don't know offhand what number is halfway between those. Let's use the formula that we just proved to figure it out. The number halfway between those should be, well, let's make sure that we see what's going on here. A over B is one half. So one is A 
and two is B. Six is C, and five is D. All right, now we can apply the formula. In the numerator, we should have A times D. So that's one times five plus C times B, which is six times two. In the denominator, we just have two times B times D. So that's two times two times five. All right, now I've just got some basic arithmetic to do. One times five is five. Six times two is 12. And then in the denominator, two times two is four times five is 20. So I've got five plus 12, which is 17 over 20. And that's the rational number that's exactly halfway between a half and six fifths. So hopefully you'll agree that's not too, too complicated. You just don't want to be too intimidated by letters and fractions. That's how you find the rational number halfway between two other rational numbers. In the former I'd be depressed, but I'd have some change to spare. In the latter I may feel more blessed, but would it really be me? I'm more aware. It smells more